Yes. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Just Plain Living. I'm John Gray. Good morning. I'm Peggy Burton. Nice to be here. And I'm Jim Fuller. <laughs> We're not going to be on camera today. Did no, you notice? No, I know. It's just, it's <laughs> it's just okay. John. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, did, you, okay. did you hear what she said before we came? I, Most I, of the time, I, folks, I, we I, don't get to share with you what's said right before we come on. <laughs> we can share because this Because it's, it's less than proper quite often. <laughs> and what yeah. did she say this morning? Uh, oh, gosh. If a man does something, blah, 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 uh, blah, if, is if, he still wrong? And man, I just said if, yes. If, if, <laughs> yeah. If, if a, a man, man speaks <laughs> and there's no one there to listen. Oh, is he still is wrong? Is he still <laughs> wrong? Well, of course. I mean, I just instantly <laughs> knew the answer, but. <laughs> of course he is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's the same. It's kind of like everything is his fault as well. Anything that goes wrong. Is it that way at your house? It's his fault. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's a given. You just, you just go ahead and say, yeah. I'm yeah. Wrong. Yeah. It's a given. <laughs> and go yeah. ahead and do what you want to do. Yeah. Right? I mean, how do you think I've been married for 38 years? Oh, is that the way you do it? <laughs> yeah, sure. John's been married I longer than that. Yeah, because you were yeah, such a 40, nice guy. 41. Yeah, so. 41, 41 years. 41 years. Which That's if good. you'd known John Same. and I in our younger days, you'd, you'd find that thoroughly amazing. <laughs> well, your first one didn't take. <laughs> yeah, my first one. Yeah, that's right. I've actually got more years in than that, but it's just with <laughs> multiple women. Yeah. You yeah. guys are so tacky. <laughs> yeah. huh? Tacky, it's just true. <laughs> that's all. Oh, just, well. When I think back about my first one, it, it's absolutely no reflection on my ex-wife. I'd have run me off too. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking back that, uh, you know. See, I'm just I'm just lucky that I I had married a very bright but yet tolerant young lady because she probably should have run me off, but she <laughs> she uh, she stayed the course. Yeah. When you said and you I'm, probably I'm run, prou I'm proud of her. <laughs> I am and too. I'm, I'm thankful for her because she she's uh, made a wonderful difference in my life. I just went, this came to my mind when he said he would have run himself off. It, it reminded me of Bobby Plummer. He'd had kind of a rough night. And uh -huh. he said the next morning he looked in the mirror and fired himself. And fired himself. <laughs> that meant yeah. he could go back to bed. Uh -huh. <laughs> I fired myself a time. Uh, yeah. He was a sight. Thank, thank goodness we don't have to go through that anymore. Cause I, That's true. That's true. There's some of those evil substances that I swore off of a thousand times and thank God it finally took <laughs> several see, years ago. you're still healthy and alive and having a yeah. great time. Yeah. Shoot, yeah, we have yeah. a good time. You know, tomorrow's Veterans Day. Yes, it is. And, uh, and, and Hence the flags and... I know. And I, I just always want to make a mention of it because it's, we have so many people to be grateful to. Yes, absolutely. Well, and there's going to be, uh, I know this show will play after this event, but there is going to be a Veterans Day celebration at South Jackson Civic Center tomorrow. That will be Wednesday, 11-11 uh, at 11 o'clock, and there will be numerous things going on there of uh, a musical nature, and and uh, there will be a speaker there. We had uh, Colonel, the Colonel on last week on the show who is Harris. going to... Is no, that's no. the young lady oh, the, who's going to the lady that's going to speak. The lady who's going to be retired. there and speak, a Telehoma high school graduate. That's wonderful, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be a great event. So if you're watching this show tonight, and please don't forget to stop by South Jackson Civic Center. There'll be a little reception there, and then there will be a, uh, a great program. It went really well last year. Yes. The place was pretty well packed. Yeah, and yeah, it'll be a great program. Nice seating, and so nobody's outside freezing. And speaking of that, of course, I'm going to do I'm going to do a little bit, a little segment later on involving Veterans Day, but this is something I I did not know. This is and Chief, you probably know this, but I I didn't know this. Uh, this is something I found on the internet, and this is from an Air Force veteran. While cleaning the stones at the National Cemetery, I noticed a quarter placed on the top of one of the stones. Later, I also found a nickel placed on another stone. I was so touched, I googled about coins and found this out. I am very proud to share this. A coin left on a headstone lets the deceased soldier's family know that somebody stopped by to pay their respects. Leaving a penny means you visited. A nickel means you and the deceased soldier trained at boot camp together. If you served with the soldier, you leave a dime. A quarter is very significant because it means that you were there when the soldier died. 
Wow. And I, I'd believe. never heard that I before didn't and didn't realize that. Yeah. It really so is. I just thought that was very touching. Yeah. Unbelievable. You know, in the military, coining is real important. When something important happens, most uh, leaders, like generals or colonels or whatever, they have a coin for their company, their battalion or right. whatever, and often they give that to someone that's important to them. I have a couple called of those. coining. I have a group. Well, you have a general. Not anymore. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he, Once a general, he has retired. He's a general. He's still he a general. He's, he's, he's still my general. Did, did you ever imagine when, when he was yes, little that he might be I a did. general, did you? I did. When he was eight years old, I wrote a poem. I couldn't repeat it because it would make me cry. Because it was in the height of the Vietnam War, and I just pictured that's what would happen with him. Yeah. And sure enough, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's been a great one. He's yeah, been a absolutely. great one. Uh, uh, we appreciate that's That's... General Bart Burton, Peggy's son, and uh, what a great, what a wonderful, what a wonderful man, and a great leader. And uh, I'm gonna vote for him for president this year <laughs> myself. Next year. I don't know if there's room for him to run. Bart Burton, <laughs> Bart Burton for president. You remember that? In my thoughts and mind, I think we need somebody from the military back running this country because those people that are up there can't figure out how to make peace with one another. To run this country properly, and uh, they can't get anything accomplished tonight. Is he being politically incorrect? <laughs> I'm, personally, I'm not going there, but he is. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, it's, uh, I'm not picking sides. I'm just talking about the whole group. Yeah. 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 The whole we, group we of them out yeah. there. You know, it doesn't seem like we can get anything accomplished. <laughs> Big week coming up. Big week coming up. Have yeah, you seen, all kinds have of things you seen Charlie on. Brown? No, I hadn't seen Charlie Brown, but I'm looks see like it's going to be cute as can be. I guess I'll have well, to go. Well, they had a lot of folks there this past I, weekend. I was trying to find a little kid to take so I wouldn't be embarrassed by show. <laughs> because you really want to go <laughs> yeah, yourself, don't you? I really don't just want to yeah, go, so yeah, I guess I'll just go. Yeah. Charlie Brown's there, and then uh, we've got some other things going on. Uh, one thing I did that always I, I enjoyed doing is uh, watching the Country Music Award Show. Oh my this gosh. past this past week it, it was uh, well <laughs> parts it, of it parts it's of it. uh it's almost like a circus I was, I was saying uh who captain kirk the original captain mm -hmm. kirk was on there uh in a stormtrooper outfit i mean it was just crazy and it's cool. it's yeah. uh it's more vegas than nashville but uh, one of the things that happened is Chris Stapleton, which is a guy that just appeared pretty much recently out of nowhere, who is an old school traditional country music guy. Uh, he won. He won uh, everything. He won album of the year. He won uh, uh, new artist of the year, and he also won male vocalist of the year. And this is a guy who not in, in, wasn't even being played on the radio. How did that happen, Reckon? Who's who? the industry has gotten behind yeah. him? They and really have. I, because this, these are industry votes. These mm -hmm. aren't like necessarily radio votes and stuff like right. that. But the industry has gotten behind him, and uh, because there's a clamor for country music to change back to traditional country music, people are tired of country music being hip hop and rap and and all the stuff like you saw. I, I noticed on the internet while the show was going on that people were saying. Yeah, I can't even stand to watch this. Well, there was a lot of it that just totally turned me off. Yeah, like so. some songs that I didn't think were very good to start with, which was fine that I couldn't hear it, but because of the lights and all the stuff going on. Yeah. You, you didn't hear the voice. You didn't. No, 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 no. Uh, so it just didn't make any sense to but me. But a quick rundown. Uh, Entertainer of the Year was Luke Bryan, female vocalist Miranda Lambert for the sixth year in a row. Chris Stapleton, male vocalist, vocal group Little Big Town, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and they're they're another one that's on the. You can understand what they say. Exactly. Florida Georgia Line was du vocal duo Chris Stapleton, new artist, oh, yeah. uh, album of the year Chris Stapleton, single of the year Girl Crush. Isn't Big that Town. interesting? That, yeah. That's a completely that really, different type of a yeah. deal. And a song of the year was Girl Crush. Musical event was uh, Raise Em Up with Keith Urban and Eric Church. And uh, and let's see, uh, Maddie and Tay won something and the musician of the year was Mac McAnally. So that's your report on country music. Thank what you is very that much. Girl Crush? Is that the name of the song? Yeah, I've, I've got, got a girl, girl crush. crush. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. And it's about I want to kiss her lips. And this is a girl talking about kissing another girl's lips. I'm thinking the first time I heard this, I'm thinking, wait a minute, what's this about? But because her lips taste like him. Yeah. 
she's got a crush on the girl that her lover's going oh, out yeah, with. Yeah, okay. And she yeah. wants to have her long blonde hair and she wants to look like her because that means maybe he'll love her. How so you cool. Have, you have yeah, oh, it's a cool song. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's okay. very well done. It's yeah. very well done. It was well done. It, so. Miss Martha Brooke Powers sang that on our country show. Yes, yeah, she did. She sure did, along with somebody else. But anyway, nice song. Nice song. And, uh, Do you stay awake for the whole thing? I kinda, yeah, oh, yeah. I kind of pass yeah. out after Heavens a while. Yes. But I do watch that it all. That excites the time. me. Yeah. Uh, if you hadn't done this, uh, we had an opportunity to go to the Franklin Theater I this have past, been there. This it's past really nice. Thursday night. And that's, that's the theater, hometown theater in Franklin that the city spent about $3.5 million dollars on mm -hmm. and turned it into a venue. And it is an absolutely beautiful place. Sound and lights are incredible. And, uh, the young man Jay Four, who was in our country show, yeah. and who was on this show, uh, did he opened up for? It was it was for Grace Works, this thing called Grace Works, and there was Jay Four sang, and then there was uh, a guy named Gordon Moat, and it was Gordon Moat and friends, and the first guy on was was Buddy Green, who played with with everybody in the world, but particularly uh, Jerry uh, Jerry Reed. For years, then, uh, then uh, God bless America. Oh, Lee Greenwood. Lee Greenwood came on and did a set, and then after Great. him, a uh, Long Black Trail, Long Black Train, uh, came on and did his set, and. Uh, so it was great. It was a great event, and uh, well, if I'll you get a chance to go up there and see something, good for him. Go up there and see it. You know, it's a uh, it's a good place to go. So. It, it's a wonderful place. They have a place where you can eat down but in the front. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's what we're trying to do with South Jackson Civic Center is make those kind of improvements there. Light up South Jackson. If you have a little extra money in your pocket and need to write a check for something before the end of the year to get a discount on your income taxes, make that big check for ten, twenty, fifteen, thirty, fifty thousand dollars yeah. to South Jackson Civic Center. They'll love you for it. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. The Kia Summer's On Us sales event is going on right now at Russell Barnett Kia of Tullahoma. Let me tell you about this event. Purchase a new Kia Sedona, Kia Optima, Kia Forte and receive 0% financing up to 66 months and your first three payments for free. For a limited time only, no strings attached. With America's best warranty, the 10-year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, Kia is the power to surprise. The Kia Summer's On Us sales event going on right now. Why buy anywhere else? All I have to do to think about what I was physically before and what I am now, and I don't ever want to go back to that original situation. The overall mission of the rehab team is always what is best for the patient and how we can facilitate maximum potential from every resident. Well, the most important thing to me is that I'm allowed to do whatever I need, want to do, you know. Everyday Miracles, Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Gentlemen, this is our segment we call Police Pointers, and joining us today is uh, Tullahoma Police Chief Paul Blackwell. And uh, his comment to me before we came on the air was, we got a new picture. They did change your picture. They did change it, okay. yes. That, that's uh, that's outstanding that uh, we worked that out this morning. About 8.15 this morning, which is about 40 <laughs> minutes before we go on the air, somebody realized that we still hadn't changed this picture, although we've been promising to for about three or four months, I guess. Quite a while. Uh, yeah, a little while, been, yes. There have been a yeah, few okay. opportunities. Okay. All right. Paul is here today to talk to us about maybe Veterans Day. Yeah, we, we can talk a little bit about Veterans okay. Day. As you all mentioned earlier, uh, tomorrow is Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. And we, the city each year recognizes veterans and, and puts on a program. So we'd like to invite everybody to come down to South Jackson Civic Center at 11 o'clock. It's always enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, a lot of good music, patriotic music, kind of music that make just makes you want to stomp your feet and, and sure. clap and, and, you know, it's just enjoyable. And always recognizing all the people that are in the uh, audience that mm -hmm. are veterans, and that's always enjoyable mm -hmm. and, and rewarding. So if your schedule permits, come down to South Jackson at 11 o'clock, usually over by 12 o'clock, and, and, you know, make it your lunch hour and yeah. go back to work. Uh, you know, of course, Veterans Day is celebrated tomorrow, but uh, myself being a veteran, you like to think that it's, it's every day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so many times we have one day set aside to honor uh, certain occupations, you know, law enforcement, firefighters, military, but really it should be every single day that, that we thank somebody for what they've yeah, done. Absolutely. Uh, I know there's been some studies that uh, between some of the other military organizations that indicate anywhere between three and six percent of the population has ever worn a military uniform. So that means 94, 95 percent have never put a, mm -hmm. have never served. So we should honor that six percent that, that, that there's only jumps out and does it. In the yes, enemy, you know. uh, but, uh, it's it's very low number. And in fact, uh, last week my wife and I took a little vacation and went to Pigeon Forge. And uh, you know, one of the things we ask, being a veteran, being retired, is, you know, do you offer a military discount? And it's about a 50-50 um, ratio of businesses or restaurants that mm -hmm. offer military a discount and those that don't. Those that don't, though, we were met with, but thank you for your service. Right. You know, it was very, oh, well, very was nice. nice. Yeah. And, and in fact, my wife commented at one place, that, well, wasn't that? And it was a young person that was waiting on, waiting on us. And uh, that young person said, no, we don't offer military discount, but thank you for your service. Right. We, we, you know, we're really appreciative of it. Um, so, so that's very rewarding. One of the things I tried to talk to, or I've suggested to Mayor Cordell, our county mayor, is uh, maybe somehow having a program in Coffee County where businesses can put something on their door that says, we support our military by a discount, 10% right. discount. Right. Not only does that kind of maybe bring you more clientele in, but it uh, it lets people know that we do support it. And look at where there's a lot of military in Coffee County. Yeah, uh, there are a lot. And uh, you know, it's one of those things I'd mentioned to Mayor Cordell. He liked the idea, but like a lot of ideas, it it, it takes some time to <coughs> work through the particulars to get through the process. Yeah. And uh, but but I think being, as I said, a veteran and that that would be a good way of our community showing we support you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not just one day a year, but, but 365 days a year. Correct. Our department, we have about a third of our officers or employees are veterans. Mm -hmm. And we've spoken before about the, the benefit of having someone that is prior military uh, in the type of organization we have. You know that that's a great characteristic. Uh, uh, so, you know, we constantly are looking for veterans, and we recognize the value that military service has for both police and fire, and you know, good community members. Sure. So that's uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. If you're watching the show on Tuesday, uh, that's tomorrow at uh, South Jackson Civic Center at 11 a.m. Correct. I think there, if you're living in, if you live in Manchester, there's also an event on the square in Manchester at 11 o'clock. And if you live in Bedford County, I believe they had a, their event on Saturday this past. There's a lot of, and, and the schools, yeah. our local schools, in the morning are. Each school has a different program going on right? and different times, so you, yeah. know, you could start at 8.15 in the morning <laughs> and, and, and go to a all. program continually up, up to 11 and, and then at the conclusion of the cities. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But, but we know that's a lot to, to get around to. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, Halloween has just passed, mm -hmm. and, and I, I get asked that, you know, how did Halloween go for us? Yeah. It was wet. It was wet. It was wet. I, which I would have guessed suppressed the crowd. You would think, but but it didn't. You know, I was out riding around through some of our areas that usually get the most traffic, and there was still a lot of traffic. People out with the umbrellas and and raincoats on, and you know, it was still a lot of people out. Uh, but it was uneventful. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it, uh, I'm sure the rain dampered a lot of people going out, but, but all in all, you know, Halloween was, was good for us. Yes, and we're always uh, glad to hear that. I'm yes, sure. and a lot of the indoor activities, from what I hear, heard, were pretty well packed. Some mm -hmm. of the churches that did their indoor activities, the mall, I heard the mall was quite crowded with uh, people doing their trick-or-treating indoors. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's always great because I know uh, some of these businesses at the last minute have to start trying to put this together when the weather starts looking uh -huh. bad. And uh, they all did a great job, uh, had not heard anything, there were no reports of anything mischievous-wise or vandalism. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I chalk that one up as a good Halloween. That's always always good when nobody got hurt and no, yes. nobody tore anything yes. up. Just a lot of wet people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've kind of been meaning to talk to you about, a little bit about police communications, and I think we got enough time okay. to get over this. But because uh, we were talking last week about uh, you were saying that people should call the communication center, not the emergency number, mm -hmm. not 911, but 3411 if you're in Tullahoma right. and looking for, and you want to report something like an erratic driver, that sort of thing. And uh, you explain why because uh, they are able to communicate. Immediately, is that you might rehash right. that for us? Uh, we have a physical location for the police department, which is on Grundy Street, mm -hmm. and we have our basic phone number. And we get a lot of people that will call the police department to report something, and we have to ask them to please call the four five five three four one one, which is our non-emergency mm -hmm. dispatch number. Right. We don't dispatch out of the police department. Right. Uh, Coffee County has a consolidated communication center that's located out on Highway 55 near the old driver's license station. Mm -hmm. They do the dispatching for all the police, all the fire, all the rescue squad, everybody so it, it, that's why that, we call that's it for, the whole, whole, for whole the whole county, county. Right. that's why we call it consolidated mm -hmm. so when we ask you to call that 3411 you're calling the communication center and that number is the Tullahoma number mm -hmm. so when it rings the dispatchers know this is a Tullahoma call mm -hmm. uh, when you call them and say you want to report an erratic driver if you call the police department we've got so much going on the person that answers the phone is not going to be able to stay on the phone with you and say what direction are you going what's the description all all of this type stuff because someone could be standing at the window needing help or an officer needs mm -hmm. some something or another phone's ringing we we just can't do that so we ask you to call the other number where the dispatcher can keep you on the line and talk to the officer at the same time so if you're following an erratic driver uh, and you say it's a blue Ford Mustang going uh, on 55 heading towards Tullahoma. That, that dispatcher can key up the microphone to the police officer and while she or he is repeating it to you, red Ford Mustang mm -hmm. uh, on Highway 55 heading towards Tullahoma, they're reaffirming it with you but at the same time they're giving that information out to the officer. Right. Uh, so that's why we ask you to call. Um, uh, calling the police department, we'll, you know, we'll take your call, but we really prefer that you call the other number. Now, I, I'm each the, the, the Tullahoma Police Department is on a different frequency as far as right. community. And, mm -hmm. and how do you use, you use that, I guess, to talk to, with each other? Is that right? Uh, the way it's set up right now, Tullahoma has a separate frequency. Manchester and Coffee County share uh -huh. a frequency. So when the dispatcher's talking to us. Coffee County and Manchester aren't hearing what's being said. Uh -huh. um, used to, everybody was on one channel. So if right. you can just imagine all the the, tra the radio traffic going on. So when our officers talk to each other, they're just, the dispatcher can hear it, but Manchester and Coffee County aren't listening. Right. We do have that capability where we can hit a button and everybody can go to one channel uh -huh. and, and we can all talk. But uh, again, if you can imagine three different law enforcement agencies on oh, that sure. at one time. You know, you hear the particularly the fire department, uh, more so than the police department, but you hear them say that I'm, they, there's an incident somewhere in a, at an address and they say, I'm going to set up a command. Taxi, command. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, is it, what do they mean when they say that? Uh, a unified command where uh, 
say Chief Shastine, because right. the fire department uses it quite often. Right. They'll set up where the chief may be somewhere else and the actual firefighters fighting a fire are somewhere else. So he can coordinate <laughs> at a distance. A, okay. uh, if it's a, a prolonged event, then we would send a police officer to that unified location mm -hmm. uh, so that that officer can communicate with the fireman next to him uh -huh. and then relay to the p police officers, what do we need you to do? Right. You know, we're going to have to run a, the fire department may have to run a line across street X, Y, and Z. So he'll tell the officer, hey, we need an officer to go to the intersection of X, Y, and Z to block traffic. So we're sitting here talking. Then if ambulance is needed, there'll be an ambulance person That's there. Right. So we can all talk amongst each other of what do you need, what do right. we and, and dispatch our, all our people to that. Oh, okay. All right. Also, uh, they can they do it more often because they're prolong they're longer. I see. The police don't use it that up because we get there, we handle the situation, and we we can move on. Right. Where you know what fighting a fire takes yeah, more sure. time, so right. you have to set up. Okay. Um, but if we have a long event, we would set up a, a command location as well. I see. Uh, I think all your units, you know, your, your vehicles are, are police, that police actually patrol in, are uh, equipped with computers. Is That's that right? Okay. Uh, well, they, what, what are they able to do with it? They all have uh, laptops in their car, and right now our record management system has a mobile CAD, which is computer aided dispatch. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we get a call at say uh, Channel 6, mm -hmm. you know, whatever your address is, 300 Wilson Avenue. The officer can go on the computer and, and type in 300 Wilson Avenue uh, in reference to a disturbance. Uh, and then all the cars will see where he's going because we've got so much going on that maybe another officer was out at, let's say, the hospital for something sure. right. where you don't get a lot of good radio communication. He gets back in the car, he can look at his computer and see. All right, Jim. Jim is at uh, Channel Six. Mm -hmm. Paul is at so and so on something. We can see where everybody's at. Now that eliminates a whole lot of questions, a whole lot of radio traffic that is useless. Right. Like, hey, can you tell me the address again? Right. Or, or where is he at? Worst case scenario is it say you were here working on a disturbance, and all of a sudden you start yelling, "I need help." I, as a chief, do not want to hear a bunch of officers saying, where's he at? Right. You know, I want them to be able to look at that computer and say he is at 300 Wilson Avenue and they can get there. That's a great idea. Uh, because, yeah. the, you know, you get people, where's he at, where's he at, <coughs> or what's the, what's the description of the suspect, and they're asking that three, four, five times. It's very frustrating. So what we're trying to get to, and I think within about eight months we'll be there, is when the dispatcher enters their information into their computer out there, uh -huh. it's going to get transmitted to our computer. Right. So we don't have to use a radio at all. And, uh, you know, just like this morning, there was an incident and two or three officers said, what was the description? Do we have a description of the person? You know, and if we get what the dispatcher puts into their computer, it comes to us. We don't have to ask that question. It's right, right there, right. and I think we're we're <coughs> six to eight months away from that, which will be really good. It'll be really good. Respond. Now the people that listen to scanners don't like it because right. it's going to cut down on a whole lot of traffic. Uh, let's say, for instance, we had an alarm at a bank. Mm -hmm. um, it would come across our computer. There may not be any radio traffic at all that says, hey, we have a bank alarm at so-and-so. Mm -hmm. It's all quiet, mm -hmm. which is good for us because we have that element of surprise. If it's over the radio and the bad guy's got a scanner, Correct. Hey, police are on the way. <laughs> and, you know, so there's a lot of that strategic stuff that is going to benefit us by having silent dispatching. Okay. Uh, but they'll still be used for the radio. The right. radio will still get used, but not nearly as much and only used when there's an extreme emergency. Okay. All right. Very interesting. A lot of, a lot more goes into this than we, the average oh, person Oh, I tell you, the old it. days of the cop just walking the beat with a billy club, those are over. <laughs> okay. High tech these days. Paul, High tech. thank you so much. Always thank you. a pleasure thank you. to have you with us. Folks, we'll be right back with more living in just a moment.
get closer to a world with more birthdays. When we take cancer patients by the hand, we help them find answers and guidance and hope and give them more candles to light. We are the American Cancer Society. Help create a world with more birthdays at morebirthdays.com. So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors, and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Cove Lake, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Martin Weekly, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, Rugby in the Big South Fork, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at TennesseeTrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. Thank you for putting a wonderful, sharp, contrasted picture on the screen. That's the way the viewers like to have it. And thank you, John, for that nice introduction. It's always a pleasure to be here and share a few wonderful thoughts that uh, might be of interest and hope they will be. Uh, today, uh, we've had some uh, inquiries and some suggestions to do a, a little thing on one of Tullahoma's long, long, landmarks and this is not the city hall or the waterworks or the water tower uh, or the depot but you remember a wonderful wonderful place at 121 north atlantic street the old famous famous candy kitchen that uh, brings back a lot of wonderful memories to a whole lot of people and um, the candy kitchen was, it was located at the place where currently the Tennessee Shoe Repair uh, Shop is, and it's the uh, uh, same spot, same building. It's been modified and uh, changed a whole lot in all these years. But as I thought to go back to the candy kitchen, that's exactly what it was. They had a big kitchen in the very back part of that building where they made candy. And I don't know who the first <clears throat> Work, worker was or candy maker was or even the first owner was but I do remember there was a fellow by the name of Mr. Martin that I think uh, was part of Avoca, uh the Knights of Pythias uh, orphanage at Avoca for, for a number of years and he operated the candy kitchen and the last uh, candy maker that I knew and watched him make candy there was George um, Cooley and he had a great big copper uh, kettle in the back part there and uh, I think he had bottle gas to, to fire it and he would open up a big bag of sugar and pour in that bright copper kettle and it would melt and he'd, then he'd put chocolate and uh, caramel in it and then top it off with peanuts and after it got stirred up real good he had a wooden paddle that he stirred his candy ingredients with and a big marble top uh, workbench or table and he would spread that uh, uh, mixture out on that marble tailor table and it was peanut brittle and oh it smelled so good and tasted so good and then of course when it it uh, cooled down why it was hard and he'd put it in uh, on wax paper in the trays that he would display it with in the showcase up front and he'd make taffy and he'd make divinity and he'd make fudge 
and you could just smell that and oh it was so good and if you just made a batch of it and there were customers in there he'd bring out a little bit of all his makings and let, let them sample it to tell him whether it was good or not and besides the, that part of the building or, or the part of the operation there was the uh, a soda fountain that uh, uh, was up front on the left as you went in the door and they had the marble top tables with the Y-back chairs there that uh, people really enjoyed coming in and having refreshments and sandwiches and sodas and sundaes and uh, of course Cokes were a nickel then as were uh, other uh, soft drinks at the soda fountain and uh, it's, I think a cherry Coke was a dime but and, and uh, chocolate milkshakes with several dips of good ice cream and they were, were 20 and 25 cents. Other people that owned and operated the uh, uh, candy kitchen was the McManus family they lived on East Grundy Street. They had a son, Lonnie, and a couple of daughters and they operated the, the uh, uh, candy kitchen for a long time and it was so so much fun to go to the candy kitchen for a Coke and then go down to the Strand Theater for a good movie. Uh, come back up and have a soda or a sandwich or, or something and uh, it was a lot of fun being in there. They had a big magazine rack sold all the, the current magazines and they even even had uh, one of the late editions was a pinball machine and I mean that Mr. Coleman I think J.L. Coleman had the uh, pinball machine there and between the the front of the candy kitchen and the kitchen itself in the rear part they expanded a, a room there and put six uh, booths three on each side and mr coleman put uh, a uh, jukebox in the back there and this was in the late 30s and uh, it was called a nickelodeon which was the same as a, a jukebox but had all the late latest numbers on the hit parade on it and and each uh, each number was a nickel or you could get six six records for a quarter and that was a lot of fun and and they, they put a hardwood floor in there and it, it was just right for dancing uh, the foxtrot or the swing and it was just so much fun being in there later i think the old family operated for a while and then um, uh, philip the name of uh, norton williams operated for, for a while and uh, mr bob good from Columbia, I uh, had it for a year or two, early when Camp Forest was here. But the candy kitchen was a place for all the teenagers to meet after school or after a football game. And uh, uh, they sold no beer there, and it was just a place where they'd come and have a good time. And uh, such fond memories, we have a real good landmark there. Later, it was uh, 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 the first Kroger store was there. and. Daddy Billy, my grandfather, had Couch's grocery store, and next to him was Kroger's, and next to, to Kroger's was H.G. Hill Company, uh, and then there was a, the Strand Theater. But those businesses stayed, stayed real busy for a long, long time, and uh, my hat's off to the memories of the, the candy kitchen where we had so much fun as teenagers. Hopefully somebody would maybe establish a place like that now where the youngsters could go and have a soda fountain and could dance and do the sock hop or whatever they wanted to do. I think it would be a great thing. And that's not the all end of the story by any means because there's a whole lot more to come. And we sure do thank you for watching and we hope you have a good day. And gentlemen, this is the paint. Uh-oh. I just knocked out a tree over. This is the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now, you know what a color wheel is? It is the wheel that the paint works where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard. It could be a 
underarm fan? You never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very, feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat, you know? They do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see David, David Eichenen over there and he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up with color. It's so nice when the color is right. Go to Paintworks today, Martin Senor. See, Martin C. Nor, right there. Martin Senor at, at the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Oh, I'm burning up. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. And the one thing that's been on my mind since I've turned um, over 65 is health care. And I know it's on a lot of folks' minds about uh, the different things that are happening in our country about Obamacare, Medicare, this care, that care, who cares, I care. <laughs> because I don't understand any of it. And I have found a master to help me navigate the waters of health care for someone my age, and I would like to introduce to you right now Miss uh, Miss Rachel Mears, and she is with, uh, what is that, Health Markets, <laughs> and she she's the one that has gotten me above the waterline and able to breathe and survive about understanding this, and she's here to talk today about Medicare, and then introduce your friend here. Uh, this is Deborah Moline. She is also, I call her our Medicare guru. If there's anything <laughs> I don't know, I go to her and ask her. So she would be a person also for Medicare. And so you're, but you're also going to talk about Obamacare today because uh, tell us why you're here to talk about Obamacare and why right now is so important in Obamacare for all of our friends out there who might be lost and struggling. Well, there has been a lot of changes that have happened between 2015 to 2016. Um, a couple of health insurance companies have gone out of business. Um, they're throwing their policyholders out into the waters and saying, here, you're done as of the end of the year. You need to find something out. So people are scrambling. They need someone who can help them navigate those waters and uh -huh. find the plan that best uh, suits them. And at health markets, we do that for them. We look through all the choices because in the state of Tennessee there's 385 plans. I mean, would you be able to look through those and find out what would be the best for your family? So what we do is we sit down with um, each person because everybody's plan is needs to be catered to them. Everybody's needs are different. There's no nobody is a cookie cutter anymore. It used to be this is the plan, everybody gets it, and then you go on your merry way. It's not like that anymore. Um, so our services are free to our clients. We just sit down with them and find out what their needs are and then just make sure that we're protecting them not only on the medical side but also on the financial side um, because let's face it, financially people were, are struggling. Um, we all, if something major were to happen to us, a lot of those plans have those higher out-of-pocket costs and they're not able to protect themselves. They're having to take from their family's finances to pay those medical bills. And that is one way that I show them how to protect that so that they're not taking from their family to take care of their medical um, portion of it. Well, and one thing, one thing, uh, you know, I was confused and, and it, cause it is confusing and I, I don't consider myself the, the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm not the dullest one either. 
Uh, and it, it's a problem to try to, to search through and sift through all of that stuff and it's pages and pages and I get frustrated with that. And this young lady right here came in and talked with me and asked me a few questions and you know she un explains this stuff and helps you understand because there, there are different, different things you can do and you think, oh well I want this because I don't have to do this. But by the time you put the numbers to it, that might what it looks like to you might be the right thing to do, is is not as good as another plan over here who that pays all your copays and stuff. So it's very complicated. And do yourself a favor, find someone who understands it, who can help you do the best for you and your family. And that's exactly what Rachel did for me. Well, I appreciate that. Um, just to kind of give you a couple of dates, um, Medicare open enrollment uh, started October 15th. It ends December 7th. Um, and Deb will talk a little bit about Medicare. Um, Obamacare or health insurance enrollment started um, November 1st and it goes until January 31st. If you want a January 1 effective date, you need to make sure you pick your plan by December 15th um, and you get that paid for so that's activated and ready for that day. Um, and so right now I know there's a lot of folks um, who watch this who are on Medicare and have a lot of questions because you do have a lot of choices um, and you need to find what's best for you. So go ahead. Yeah. Well basically Medicare has four parts, A, B, C, and D. A and B is your original Medicare, your red, white, and blue card. Um, and with that you can choose a supplement. They have the letters A through N. Or you can go to Medicare Part C, which is an alternative um, where it is paid for by Medicare for what what they budget per person and then you pay co-pays um, and then there's part D is your drugs and everybody has to have a drug plan now even if you don't take prescriptions or you are going to get a penalty for not choosing a drug plan so the chance to do that is between now and December 7th um, and if you miss that then you're gonna have to wait a whole nother year to get a drug plan and your penalty is gonna keep accumulating in the meantime and you know that's something that that you think or you don't think about mm -hmm. is you go oh they're talking about they're going to penalize me for not doing something ah they're not they can't do that they're not going to do that well let me tell you what yeah they will and yeah they do and uh you don't you don't uh take that seriously you better because i have got penalized and if they're going to penalize me they're going to they penalize everybody and uh, you have to make a choice. It's kind of, it's kind of demanding uh, that that someone can tell you you mm -hmm. have to do this. But guess what? We right now we have to do this, and you need to find folks like these ladies right here who can help you find a way through that because they will, mm -hmm. they will uh, find you or levy you or whatever it is, and they're gonna take it. They're gonna take it from you whether they, whether you write them a check or not. They'll get it somehow. And we're local. Um, we have, I have an office uh, in Manchester on Hillsborough Boulevard. Um, there's the phone number for it. Stop in, call, set an appointment. And not only do you have to come to the office, as we're also available, we come to you. Um, that's one of the perks, I think, of having us as um, your advisors, is that we get to come to you. We will sit down with you in your home and go over your options and what's the best plans that are for you. Not many people do that anymore. Yeah, we well, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say, we make house calls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but a lot go. of my clients like the fact that they can have my number on speed dial and they can call me very quickly and just ask and a quick answer. question. Mm -hmm. They don't have to call an 800 number and speak to somebody in right. some other country or some other state. I always say we speak Nashville English. There so they can call <laughs> us good. and we can That's answer good. a quick question for them. That's good. And what I, like about, what I like about this more than anything else is just like you said earlier, you don't bill us. Your service is mm -hmm. free because you get paid by the providers. Correct. And, and so they don't have an allegiance mm -hmm. to someone to make an extra nickel over here or an extra nickel Correct. over there. They're here to find you the best plan for you. Just like we were going through something and, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, uh, 
you probably don't want to do this because I'm going to be paying less and you won't make as much money. And you said, oh, no, I make more money off of this. Mm -hmm. so but it wasn't the right plan for you. But it you. wasn't the so right plan we for me. Right so that's, for not what she, that's not what we used. And that's what's so incredible to me is to have someone that honest and that, that personal to be right in your office. They came right here to the studio or Rachel came right here to the studio and helped me through this. I had a question. I called her up. She answered it. Today she walked in to be on the show. I had another piece of mail that had come in that I didn't understand. She looked at it real quick and said, oh, that's done. Uh, these folks are great. <laughs> Give them a call. Tell them to come see you. They will absolutely hook you up with some good service. I didn't pay you to say that, did I? <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't, but you will before it's over. <laughs> oh, that's Girls, great. Girls, thank you very much. Is You're there welcome. anything else you'd like to say right now? Did we pretty no. much get it covered? Just keep the dates in mind and give us a call, and um, we'll help you out best we can. Yeah. Okay. And we're gonna, what we're going to try to do is have them come back from time to time because things will change. They'll change with a new administration. They'll change from year to year, from quarter to quarter. We're probably going to try to have, find a way to have these ladies come back and keep us updated on what's going on. With that said, we'll be right back after this commercial break. It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green and recycle. Tullahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Jacob. I'm the rooster. And I'm the red mate. And we would like to welcome you to Roosterware. Yes, Roosterware is a cottage industry producing accessories for men, women, children, babies, and pets. All items are hand cut and sewn locally. Roosterware specializes in bow ties, pocket squares, scarves, cufflinks, neckties, and aprons of all sizes for all ages. Baby products include onesies, diaper covers, bibs, and burp pads. All bow ties, tie it yourself, or pre tied come with an adjustable neckband. All products can be made with the material of your choice as special orders are available upon request. Don't be standing back looking at fashion. Create your own with Rooster Wear. Come visit us at roosterandredmaiden.com to find our handcrafted designs for the cock of the wall. <laughs> Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and news makers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're pleased to have joining us on the set now three lovely ladies. I always like doing these kind of interviews here. <laughs> of course, to my left, and, and and I also like to have this lady on, uh, Diane Bryan, who is executive director of the Tullahoma Chamber of Commerce. Because when she's on the set, I don't need to know anything. She's <laughs> she's good with the whole deal. <laughs> to her left is Jennifer Bogle, and to her left is Christy Armarker. And uh, you guys are here to talk about what, Diane? Holiday Open House. Okay, that sounds like fun. It does. Tullahoma, the total package. We are continuing our um, our total package series. We've had our map that we've had circulating now for almost a year, mm -hmm. and this will be our second annual Holiday Open House, and we have 14 merchants um, participating in this event, and it is November 19th, 20th, and 21st, okay. which is a Thursday, 
uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. and it will begin on that Thursday evening from 5 to 7 with a sip and shop. Sip, sip and, and shop. shop. I love that. There, name. there you go. There you go. And then from there, it will be regular business hours for each of the, the stores for um, their Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. So basically, I have with me today Jennifer, who is with the Unique Boutique, mm -hmm. and then Christy Almacher, which is obviously with Christy's Merle Norman, but then she has a whole list of other players that she brings to the table as well. So I think it would be good for them to talk about the things that they're planning to do for that event. Okay. Sure. Well, for, uh, for our sip and shop on that Thursday evening, um, we're going to be doing gift basket giveaways. Um, we're going to be doing um, a gift with every purchase, and we're also going to be featuring wine from Lynchburg Winery. Uh -huh. um, so they are uh, a new um, company that just started up recently, so we're going to have a lot of their wines to sample. Um, and then for the rest of the open house, we're going to be having store-wide discounts, door prizes, giveaways, um, refreshments, just anything and everything that, uh, that you would that we think that you will enjoy and uh, and come shop with us. <laughs> That's one of the best ideas I have ever heard. I mean, can you imagine sip and shop? That's right. That's going to really right. make That's you right. inclined That's to shop. That, I, think I, it's, would, I, I think it's a great combination myself. <laughs> I'd yeah. like to do it every day. But. Sure. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. And do talk about your location. Oh, yes. I am, uh, I'm 206 East Lincoln. Um, I am right in between Emile's and the Painted House. And what kind of gifts and items do you have we in your store? We sell uh, everything in our store is handmade. Um, a lot of it is local artists. Um, we like to try to support our local artists as much as possible. Um, so we do have a lot of that. Um, I also do some shopping around the country. But it's everything is 100% handmade. So you're always going to find something that is unique and different and that you're not going to find anywhere else. Very okay. Good. All right. And can Christy, I can I ask Christy a question oh, before go she for it. <laughs> Do you still do the Merle Norman? Yes, sir. Thing? Uh -huh. Okay, I got to tell you, folks. Before Christy owned Mer uh, Merle Norman, uh, I got old enough that I needed makeup for television, and I went down there, <laughs> and they actually knew what to do to guys <laughs> who, need, who needed makeup. <laughs> you know, that's been a few years ago. <laughs> I still, still use it occasionally, so, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> this is true confessions today. Yeah, that's right, that's right, you know. Well, we're Thursday night we'll have the sip and shop also. We're gonna be, um, have Daddy Billy's and London's bring in um, their sample trays and have food, look, you know, around us. Um, we're going to have um, Tony Patton come back with all of his wine and um, do some wine tasting there. And um, But we're going to have door prizes and drawings and giveaways. Um, we had a sip and shop the other night, a girls' night out, and we gave away a $100 gift certificate and um, several other different items. Um, we have several different shops in the downtown avenues. We have um, Bryn Chu Boutique, and we have um, Trendy Boutique. She's a, a boutique clothing um, shop. And we have Southern Sass, that's two hairdressers. That's Pally Weaver and Deanna Meadows. Mm -hmm. And then we have Claire's Candy, that's um, Claire owns that. And she has so many different types of candies, and which would be great stocking stuffers for for stockings for Christmas and then we have the Rustic Lantern that's owned by Shannon Cole and um, she has a lot of little unique um, southern um, style gifts in there um, and then we have Shannon also has another store called Blessed Forever it's um, she's an esthetician and she does Botox Juvederm um, several different things um, for the skin and then we have um, Body and Soul coming in. Um, they'll be in in about a week. They're a massage therapist and they sell um, health products also. And then we have um, Lickety Splits Cakes. She bakes cakes and cookies and um, cupcakes for special occasions. Um, and then we're working, still working on Jay's Ice Cream and Coffee Bar. So that's probably going to be in the spring. Oh, cool. So, and then we have Larry Banks Photography upstairs. So he does all the photography for the schools in town. And um, then we have Thunder Radio coming upstairs on the West Lincoln side. There's and a lot of stuff 
happening in that building there. there, in there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a great use of that yeah. building. Yeah, it such is. Such a great use. It just makes you smile mm -hmm. when you walk in the door. Oh, really yeah. I think, it's, I think it's wonderful yeah. that that, that, that building, which is such a big part of the telephone history, is, is alive and well and quite vibrant, apparently. And very <laughs> so, vibrant. Very vibrant. Yeah. Very right. vibrant. So, and we've got several other merchants that are joining us. Obviously, merchants at Coker's, which immediately comes to mind, and Clayton's. Um, the Silver Mine uh, is, a, is a part of us. Also, um, um, Brinkley's um, Home Decor and Gifts is, is a part of this as well. And, and T. Michelle's, um, what they're going to do is basically each business is going to put a red ribbon um, on their door to designate that they're going to, that they are involved in the, the holiday um, t telehome of the total package. Mm -hmm. We've got Woodard's Diamond Showroom um, involved with us as well. So, and everybody's going to have their own giveaways and their own combination of, of the um, other items that they're bringing in to, to the event. So, it'll be, it should be a great, it should be a great time for all. It sounds like it's going to be a wonderful time. Christy was talking about, you know, she's got uh, food brought in from London and, and, Daddy. and Daddy Billy's, you know, and it, then it occurred to me as she was telling me that, and this event is uh, sip and shop and you know <laughs> what a great atmosphere down there in downtown Tallahassee. Oh, there, you know. I do want to add we've got Lindsay's Boutique and, and Children's Shop joining us as well as Proper's Trading Company that we just saw their their commercial and Tallahassee Drugstore and you know, mm -hmm. they have a ton of gifts at Tallahassee Drugstore so they're going to be involved with us as well. Right, cool. Okay. What a way to get started in the Christmas spirit. Well, and, and that is our hope, is, is to go ahead and, 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 as Christie's mentioned, to go out there and get ideas for those stocking stuffers and those gifts. And, you know, we, we all understand that, you know, you're not going to find everything that you might need, you know, here in our local stores. But we really do feel if you will make the effort and if you will get out, you really can do all of your Christmas shopping here in Tullahoma and support mm -hmm. our local merchants. And and we just we just we're doing everything we can to encourage people to get out there and, and have it be entertaining, have it be fun, um, and, and and keep that money local. Okay, and for you guys who might be doing that too, I'm sure that the, these ladies would be happy to help you. If you're as lost as I am when you get in the, in those those kind of environments, uh, I'm confident that can happen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds like fun. Christy, did you have something else? Well, we're also going to have Santa every Saturday in December okay. coming, so he'll be there from ten to five um, yeah. every day. And uh, Larry, I mean um, Greg Green is going to be. Uh -huh. Taking those pictures. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. So it's a great opportunity to have your children's picture taken with, oh, yeah. with Santa. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Well, girls, thank you so much for coming by. Always fun, and uh, our, th these folks are already in the Christmas spirit. I can tell you, uh, they're, ready we're to, ready. they're ready to we're go. Ready. <laughs> Sip and shop. I love that name. For goodness <laughs> sakes, folks, we'll be right back with more living right after this. At the time, maybe you were just building a bridge, a business, or a community. Maybe you were simply working for a home or a better tomorrow. At the time, you served out of duty and love of country. But in that time, we see a legacy created, an American dream lived. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. There's no place like home. Getting home safely is just a click away. And choosing the right seat for your little one's age and size will take you down the road to safer travels. How can I ever thank you enough? Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. I'm meteorologist Leland Statham from the News Channel 5 Weather Center. Look to Jim Fuller and crew for local news night here on Channel 6.
Good morning. I'm Brittany Cleveland. I'm the physical education teacher at Robert E. Lee, and I was also the coordinator for the 5K. This is Danae Greenwood. She is a first grade teacher at Robert E. Lee, and she has helped me at the score table today, helped me put all this together. Um, we had about 108 people show up for our Great Pumpkin 5K. Um, you can see the scoreboard behind us with the places. We would like to thank all of our parents, our volunteers, teachers, students, and PTO members. Thank you so much for helping out. We couldn't have done it without you. The Animal Shelter has served Tullahoma dogs for nearly 30 years. Now, you can help us build a bigger and better no-kill shelter. Your tax-deductible gift is matched dollar for dollar. So come on, bark it forward and donate now to have your tax-deductible gift matched. Make your check payable to the COT Shelter Building Fund and go to TullahomaTN.gov to see all the unique gifts available for your generosity. For more details, you can call City Hall at 455-2648. Did yeah. you take your medicine? Oh, gosh, I forgot it. Her nurse. You need a claim number? Her personal assistant. Let me just grab a... Her housekeeper. Her cook. Her accountant. When I started taking care of Mom, I didn't realize the challenge of playing so many roles. But above all, I'm still her daughter. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving to connect with experts and other caregivers. Together, we can better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Welcome back. I'm Peggy Burton, you might know that. I'm Performing Arts Chairman at South Jackson Civic Center, and I've brought on the set with me today, Deborah Hanson. Hi, Deborah. Hi. I'm so glad you came. Thank you very and, much. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the weekend at South Jackson Civic Center with uh, Robin Spielberg on Friday night, the 20th of November, and then a young artist showcased on the 22nd of November on Sunday afternoon at 2.30. And during those two concerts, we're having this wonderful art exhibit. Deborah's kind enough to bring some of the artwork yes. that is done by an organization called Happy. Happy. Healing Arts Project Incorporated. And uh, these art pieces we have here are some of the artwork we're going to show. Yes. And when was the last uh, place you showed all this? These, these paintings were shown at the Mary Magdalene Church in Fayetteville, and it was set up for a two-week show, a project that we've, we're trying to expand the, the Happy Project into Lincoln County, and by bringing the art into the community and allowing the people there to 
view that as well as the artists that, that, that have created them. To me, that's what's them. so exciting about this is because all this artwork is being done with people in healing arts. Yes. Some might be have a problem with drug addiction, mm -hmm. mental illness, um, alcoholism. Am I right? Yes. You correct me if I'm yes. wrong. But, but I think what you're doing is showing how helpful it is for people to be involved in the healing arts. Yes, the, the um, amazing thing about having the exhibits is that when the artists themselves come in and see the art hanging on the wall. That they did. They did. They are so excited and so proud. And you can almost see the self-esteem building. They're Which is not, the, it is, it's very important. There are four peer centers in Middle Tennessee that um, are part of this program out of Nashville and I we are trying to expand it into Tullahoma, Tullahoma which is and where I live and I'm really excited about that and into uh, Fayetteville I want to show a few of these pieces okay. and you'll have to tell me a little bit about uh, this particular piece, it was done by Michelle. Michelle East. This was one of the, we had at St. Mary Magdalene a pilot happy project and we had artists for four weeks. This is one of the paintings that was created. And I think you told created. me this was one of the paintings that, mm -hmm. that people did not actually have a brush in their hand. Right. They had that, to use just odd bits odd and bits and pieces. Uh, that's maybe right. sponges and uh -huh. uh, odd things. And uh, this one here. It's upside a bit, down. Oh, I've got it upside down. Sorry. Yep. There we go. A little bit hard now, to see, but Karen it, Fly is a member of the Shelbyville Reconnect. Good. So I wanted to show this. This is this is. Um, she. And so she is, did, did, she's she's a wonderful artist, and she has a lot of physical problems. And to be able to do art is is part of the healing process. Uh, to me, that's the beauty of it all, because I'm a firm believer in what art and music can do. And I hope forever it's in the schools and in yes. your life. It's it's important. Mm -hmm. uh, these programs that we're doing, where we're showing the artwork, on November twentieth. The building will open about 6.30 and the stage show will start about 7, at 7.30, not about 7.30. But all that time you can mingle with some of the artists. You'll be there, right? I will okay. be there. I'm, I'm looking forward to having you. I wanted you to talk about this piece. That one intrigued oh, me a bit. Yes. This is Mitchell Wiseman's. It is called Rainbow oh, let me put Eagle. It over here. Oops, there we uh, go. Oh, she just had it set up. Sorry. <laughs> I, I thought it wasn't going to work over there. All right, okay. here we go. Now, m this is an original. Mitchell drew every single one of those lines. Great colors. And, and then took time to color it. How long and do you think it took him to do this? I have absolutely no idea. He is new to me, new to the Tullahoma Reconnect Center. When he's, he's young, when he started doing things like this in high school, his, his art teacher really encouraged him. And I have seen some of the most fantastic works that he's done. So he's he's new been to in, us. And you've been involved in this project for how many years? I've I've been since 2009. Now I know you came from New York all the way yes. down to to, to this area, to yes. this region. Yes. And you have continually got you got hooked up with the happy organization in through the the reconnect program that they had in Fayetteville that was closed and combined with the reconnect here in Tullahoma and how are some of the ways it's actually helped you what do you where do you, how do you feel it's helped you out Deborah I am I am amazingly different than I was than in 2009 I That's was beautiful. I was very shy trying to get the right medications I'm I'm bipolar and the self-esteem 
the the patience that I've developed in doing the artwork and I am just so grateful for oh, happy wonderful. and you're a spokesperson for this part of this organization and I, I am so thrilled that I had a chance to meet you and find out how much you have put of yourself into seeing that this is successful and I thought we ought to say that if anybody out there is interested in getting involved in this program mm -hmm. just go to your website www.healingartsprojectincorporated and you can find out anything you need to find out you can uh, get phone numbers from whoever you need or you can even call me and I'll do my best to help yeah. out um, when you when we finish this art exhibit, I think you're going to bring about 40 pieces, 30 yes. to 40 pieces mm -hmm. that uh, will represent Middle Tennessee. Yes. This local yes. Middle Tennessee sort mm -hmm. of area. It'll it'll be from Nashville oh, okay. down down through Middle Tennessee, and I will have a few pieces from Lincoln County. Okay. And definitely ones from Tullahoma, from the Reconnect Center there. Where is, do you know where the Reconnect Center is, located in Tullahoma? It's all right if you where, know. Where the Center Stone is. Oh, okay. It's on the other side of the railroad tracks. Yeah. I don't know the street name. That's okay, that's okay. But mm -hmm. remember, Reconnect and Center Stone and. Yes. It's a, the, it's a. The phone number that you see is how do you get tickets to come to the Robin yes. Spielberg stage production and the Young Artist Showcase stage production and at the same time we're doing this wonderful art exhibit by the he Healing Arts Project. Healing Arts Project, yes, and please come. It, the, you were trying to get rid of the stigma to be able to show just how healing this art can be for people. I think that uh, anybody that understands any sort of illness, be it cancer, be it mental illness, be it alcoholism, drug addiction, mm -hmm. or just being a person that's lonely and needs help. Yes. You need to get involved in something, be it art, be it music, maybe you need to go play a game of golf, I'm not sure. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get your mind off of what brings you down. Yes. You need to find things to build you up. How often do you meet with this group in your area? In my area, right now in Tullahoma, they are having art classes on Mondays from 1 to 2.30 at the Reconnect Center. From 1 to 2.30, so, and does it cost? It does not cost I anything. I didn't think so. Um, the, the Happy Project has um, people who donate, and it is backed by quite a few um, different centers like the, the Metro Arts and, and yes. places like that. I'm not exactly sure. But I, I think but if anybody um, wanted to donate, or mm, are these going to be for sale? Yes, some okay. of them are for sale, absolutely. And so the prices will be written on the, on the yes, pictures? Yes, they will. There's mm -hmm. one here I haven't shown. Let me stick it up here real quick. Um, yes, that one was oh, I've got done it by down. Ed Clay. I have a, is that oh. the right set up or nope. is it upside down? It's well, upside down. There we go. <laughs> Okay. All right. This is it's uh, called On the Farm. Oh, On the Farm. On the Farm. And this painting was done at the Reconnect Center here in Tullahoma. In Tullahoma. He is from Fayetteville. And Fayette Clay. Ed Clay. Well, Deborah, the time goes so fast, but how gracious it was of you to come down oh, here. Oh, thank you for having me, We'll be looking me, forward Peggy. to November 20th, November 22nd. Please come and view this beautiful artwork and support uh, performing arts as well as... Yes, as happy. Happy. Thank you we'll very much. We'll be back with who knows what. Smoking tobacco accounts for three of every 10 fire deaths in the United States. Tullahoma Fire Department, Tullahoma Fire Department, need you en route to a structure fire, 202 Main Street, heavy smoke showing. Neighbors advise child trapped inside. Lighters, matches, 
and associated smoking paraphernalia are the leading cause of preschooler fire deaths. We as firefighters know that most structure fires can be prevented. I've got one! I've got one! Command, this is primary search. We have a victim. Need EMS to meet us at the front door. Please help us to give you a fighting chance. This can be prevented. Contact the Tullahoma Fire Department for a free home safety inspection. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip, and then, boom. Adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Folks, one thing I want to do as we close the show is remind you again about Veterans Day. And uh, I'm a vet. I'm very fortunate that I never had to leave the country, but so many of my friends did and some didn't return. Uh, I would like to close the show and read a little poetry that I think has the vets in, in mind. And if you see a vet, if you know a vet, thank them for their service. This is The Warrior. A young warrior stands in an ill wind. The battle still rages on without him. A leader of men both tall and strong now fights with the moment where dreams are gone. A, a chill determination still shines in his eyes, but the enemy no longer fears his battle cries. His heart and his will still scream out for more, but the legs that he stand on can't take him to war. His comrades in combat still march glory bound as he fights with the feeling that he let them down. But their strength in the fact they still hold his dreams and they find inspiration each time he screams. A young warrior stands in an ill wind and dreams of the day when he fights again. The enemy will change, he must wait and see, but no matter the battle, a warrior he'll be. Yes, the enemy changes, that's life's way, you see. But no matter the battle, a warrior he'll be. The shoes left behind. The question's been asked so many times, who's going to keep the flag high? Up in the wind like our heroes did to follow as we watched it fly. As they pass along in the midst of the song, someone must finish the rhythm and rhyme. The lessons they taught, the battles they fought, have fitted you for the shoes left behind. Wearing the shoes left behind, being a torch in the night, how can you ever measure up and match the blazing light that their legacy left for you to see, knowing that you would find in the memories all you would need to wear the shoes left behind? At times they loom so large, sometimes the pressure squeeze tight, but the more you walk the road they trod, the more the fit feels right. It's hard, as hard as it seems, follow your dreams, you're one of a one of a kind. Embrace the morn, because you were born to wear the shoes left behind. And for all those who've left shoes behind and all of those who are left to fill them, we thank you for your service. And don't let a wounded warrior go unattended. They have given legs, arms, eyes, so many things to fight for the freedom that you and I enjoy every day. God bless them and keep them, keep them at peace. And you help a warrior, help a vet every chance you have. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>